so yeah I do have to wear glasses when I'm driving but um anyway so we're going into the home place there and, and uh, <clears throat> we're gonna go down here and probably end up just helping Brandon because um, the way we've kind of got things spread out was Brandon does a lot of the tagging and the vaccinating of the baby calves um, Daniel is off feeding and Vernon is off feeding as well and doing uh, different different things and then they'll, they'll all come over to the cabin shed um, Victoria just texted me and said she's bringing her crew over so uh, we'll have lots of help this weekend and um, usually you know this one or more of the kids that are that live here they're helping um, I asked Reagan yesterday how many uh, pins she cleaned and she had cleaned one but she's five <laughs> so um, oh okay so this is uh, welcome to our life on a dirt road right when there's uh, five inches of frozen ice and then it's starting to thaw in some spots and so we don't get the smoothest ride in the world but we're gonna go in here and and uh, take you through just a little bit of what we're doing and oh, there's my shadow back there and uh, let's see what else do I need to tell you we're almost I think halfway through calving out the heifers we've had we had a hundred heifers to calve this year and of course heifers means right that it's their first calf and so they don't know what's going on and they're like a teenage girl having a baby they're you know they're physically able to do it but you know complications might increase and and uh, so that's why we keep such a better eye on them once they have a calf then they're just like Psh, you know I could do this again so even though we keep an eye on the cows that are calving we don't get up in the night you know unless like the weather's really bad or something and we need to go out and check um, boy you might not have been able to see me that whole time huh now that I look at the screen and <laughs> figure out I'm backlit. Oh well. So I'm driving into the home place where Daniel lives and where Johnny used to live. Where I used to live. And uh, maybe we'll turn you out here a little bit <clears throat> and show you if I can. There's These are the heifers that have calved. Can you see that? Anyway, Daniel's obviously fed them and they got, I think they got new bedding yesterday. Uh, we have to give them fresh bedding every, oh, sorry, that was the rear view mirror. Anyway, um, we have to give them fresh bedding every couple days because, um, you know, they poop, <laughs> they pee they don't care that it's on their bed so we clear that out and uh, give them the fresh stuff and uh, then we'll come up here on top of the hill and you'll be able to look down at the ones that haven't calved and we'll kind of it's kind of nice to see them because the road goes up on the hill above them and so you can look down on them and get a good view of what might be calving. Yep, Brandon's already there. Cleaning pins, tagging, stuff like that. That's about all I'm good for. I mean, not that I haven't helped. Helped them calve. Done that. Been there. Done that. Lived in that house. Come over here. Used to do the 10 o'clock check. And uh, that was kind of my deal back when I lived here, but now I don't really help with the check te test does and, and Daniel and 
Brennan will come here uh, and uh, Brandon will come here and uh, so they all rotate they all take a shift so every few hours somebody's looking at the heifers and then uh, oh, it's really rutted here um, anyway so oh, see told you and it's slick okay all right so now we're coming down here I can see moving. I'll catch you up on what's going on in just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of a voiceover here because um, we generally try and keep it pretty quiet when we're around animals so we don't do a lot of talking or yelling or at least the minimum. Uh, what you see here is uh, Daniel and his one of his um, personal calves. That's the cow. That's the mama right there on the left. Uh, anyway, the calf isn't feeling so good, and so he's trying to get it to drink some electrolytes out of a bottle, and um, the calf's not going to cooperate very well. So what he decides to do, eventually, uh, he gave it quite a while, and this is why ranchers have bad backs. Uh, Vernon says this kills him now. <laughs> to do this kind of stuff. But anyway, you'll notice that Daniel has taken the bottle away and he's poured the electrolytes into this um, tube. So it has a long, a long tube that you actually put down the calf's throat into their stomach and then it, you basically just pour it down into them. And so that electrolyte will get him perky and, and I'd like to tell you that yes it did work and so this calf even though he was kind of scoury which means he has diarrhea he's doing very well now so uh, that was a good thing that, that Daniel did okay here again I want to do a little vo voiceover I just prop my camera in the corner and and just to show you what cleaning a pins like <laughs> um, so <clears throat> uh, Basically, you just use a, a big manure fork, which is like a really wide pitchfork. And so you can hold that um, stuff together. And as you can tell, that straw in the middle is just soggy, soggy. And it's heavy, believe me. And, you know, you think about it, not only do you have poop or you have pee because a, a cow's been there for 12 hours, you also have all the amniotic fluid that uh, appeared when the, you know, calf was born. So you have all that. And... And so that one area of the pen will be really soggy because the straw really absorbs it. And uh, right there, Brennan's just talking to me, and I'm telling him I really hate to put all this yucky stuff on top of the pretty bedding. Um, and he told me I could haul it way around and put it on the dirty pile if I wanted to, but I just kind of laughed and, and ignored him. Um, but, yeah, it, it it's quite the workout. And so... Um, I, I did need to say, I, I don't haul it a long ways away. I just uh, am happy that I can still pick that stuff up. <laughs> and then when I come back here in a minute, uh, you'll see I can carry a lot more when uh, it's not full of fluid. Um, the heifer in the next pen obviously is upset. Um, most of our heifers don't act like that. But this one, uh, of course, they've, they've never been in a small pen like this. Uh, so it's not a, you know, a great thing for them sometimes. And, and this one really was getting stressed. And so, um, we, I didn't even finish really cleaning that pen and I sure didn't bet it back down, um, because she was getting, getting so wound. She didn't like me there. Uh, she didn't really like Brandon over there. Brandon's, uh, given the beginning, uh, vaccinations, the little bit of, um, vitamins and stuff to that baby calf over there and weighing it and so anyway with this you can see I'm, I'm it's kind of like a layer cake you just put layers and layers and layers and then uh with a little leverage you can haul a fair amount of uh straw at a time if it's not wet but you can see the the, the heifer's getting more and more wound so we just kind of called it quits
Got a curler. How much? getting those heifers off the hill because of course we don't want them up here calving but uh, really really in here again um, sorry about the bad perspective here with uh, not being able to see very good in, in the side by side but anyway I wanted to point out to you guys that um, if you notice the heifer that's back behind um, she has a telltale sign that she is calving um, and that is the kink in her tail and oh there she slips on the ice uh, which is you know not good but anyway she's okay <laughs> um, but if, if you kind of see her from the side you can see she's holding her tail out a little bit and there's kind of a kink in it and they'll they'll get that when they're um, starting to calve so that's a really good telltale sign you know besides you know if, if there was some fluid sack hanging out but <laughs> the kink in the tail is, is a good one um, there we have to, this is our irrigation ditch that we have to cross, um, but these heifers are put in this pen every night so we can keep an eye on them, uh, and as a result, they're used to going in that pen, and so it's pretty easy to scoot behind them here in the side-by-side, -side. you know, where to go, Brandon's over there with Jekyll and making that last little turn into the pen so we can then lock them up. Uh, we'll shut the gate behind them 
here and then uh, they'll be put in one of those smaller pens to actually continue calving. Okay, here we're working together um, to try and get this heifer in. She's lost her ear tag and uh, so we're gonna run her in to the chute and, and check um, the, her bangs tag for its number. If you, if you notice in the right ear is where we have our um, ear, individual ear tags. And in the left ear, you'll see an orange button, little round ear tag. There, I'm kind of stuck my hand through the fence just to swish her along and try and help the boys out just a little bit. <laughs> so, um, you know, sacrifice the dirty camera. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, so she's, she's coming around and I'm standing at the front. I haven't moved very much, but uh, you'll see me pretty quick. I'll, move to the back because when you stand in front of a cow they don't want to come towards you so um, she sees how she's watching me up there and so pretty quick I'll take a couple more steps and we'll get to her back and um, then this this is an old shoot and so it doesn't really have a gate at the end and so we just put a bar back behind so then she can't back up and then uh, she goes through the head catch and bangs around a little bit you know totally unnecessary she didn't have to do that but anyway so you'll see uh brennan's going down and he's reading that numbers off the ear tag because each one is individual to to the heifer and we've got that all written down uh, I've talked about bangs vaccinating before, so that's what the bangs tag looks like these days. Um, and so he will cross-reference that to her actual number, and he already had a pretty good idea who it was. So he's got a tag pre-made, and then here comes Daniel with the tag, and um, her ear had split out where she had lost that um, ear tag. And so he has to find a new spot and you have to watch. They have veins in their ears, so you don't want to um, pierce one of those um, ears. I mean, it's not. you do want to pierce the ear. You don't want to pierce the vein because then they bleed and it doesn't feel good. So anyway, um, we always have to discuss a little bit which way she's going. And um, Daniel was going to put her one way and Brandon was going to put her the other. And Anyway, so... <laughs> We got it figured out. Most of the time, we're pretty good about figuring out which way without a lot of talking. But uh, anyway, so that's why I'm kind of uh, shoving the gate back and forth, cause trying to figure out which way we're going. So anyway, she just heads on back out and uh, meets up that little uh, tackle box that Brandon carries has um, the stuff that he needs to ear tag calves and. Um, earmark them and band them if they're bull calves. So um, there we go. We got that little scenario taken care of and and they'll put her all the way back in where she was before. Just like that. It's like we've done it before. Maybe. Kind of. Sort of. <laughs> You and living the life of Riley, huh? Are ya? Yeah. Looks like it. Yeah, I think you are. <laughs>